Matt. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. You are live now. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for being here. Uh, let me give everybody a quick introduction, and then I'll hand it over uh, to you to um, introduce, uh, Clarify, and how they're powering e-commerce. Uh, so very quickly, uh, Matt founded Clarify in 2013. Uh, he's CEO. Um, Clarify is an artificial intelligence platform that solves real-world problems for businesses, government agencies, and developers. Uh, Clarify's platform offers products for the full AI lifecycle, including data labeling at scale and search over massive data sets, which helps retailers turn workers into buyers. Um, as I noted, I'll hand it off now to Matt to tell us about how Clarify is powering e-commerce with computer vision search. Great. Thanks for having me here. Can everyone uh, see my screen? We can, yes. Awesome. Great. So, yeah, I want to walk you through a little bit about who we are and how we help uh, e-commerce companies, retailers as well uh, with computer vision. So just to give a little bit uh, more background about us, uh, we're headquartered in New York. Uh, that's where I did my PhD and then founded Clarify. And we've grown to over 70 employees across New York, Washington, DC, San Francisco, and now Estonia. Uh, as I kicked off the company, we ended up being named kind of the world leaders in computer vision by winning the ImageNet 2013 competition. And most recently, we were named a leader by Forrester in their 2019 New Wave report on computer vision platforms. We were the only startup to be named a leader. Um, the three other people were Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. So it was a great uh, accomplishment on that side. And to date, we've raised about $41 million from some great backers. We really believe in our strategy to build a horizontal AI platform to help businesses like yourselves get the advantages of AI. And so as we talk to e-commerce companies, we're seeing a lot of common trends in their use cases and the business problems they're trying to solve. And those uh, we kind of outlined here, and then I'm gonna walk through more examples of how we work with customers, show a little bit of our technology, and then uh, show some case studies of specific customers. So the trends we're seeing are really the product descriptions uh, being automated when, especially if you have an e-commerce marketplace, uh, time to post, and the ease of posting is really important for the sellers. So we can automate those descriptions and title predictions based on visual content, as an example. Uh, we also support similar product recommendations. So if you have uh, an image and you want to find uh, if that similar product is available in the product catalog, you can use a visual search to find that automatically without even knowing the name of the product or any specific keywords. Uh, we also focus on bridging the gap between physical and digital worlds. And I'm gonna to touch more on this in a little bit um, as well. Um, we're also hearing trends, some that we don't support yet today, but are really uh, on our uh, horizon. Chatbot enabled services are enriching the customer experiences. Uh, we're actually building out some natural language processing, uh, which you'll see from us uh, in the next coming months. And we're very excited about that because we can start enabling use cases like this. Uh, voice search is also driving online sales we're hearing from our customers and so we're investigating how we can help out around audio and speech recognition and then a big one i'm very excited about is metadata enhancement and i'll show an example in a little bit about how uh, today is just not cutting it and so when we think about all these different use cases it's always important to think about the roi what are we actually going to provide in terms of value to our customers um, and how are they gonna measure that? And on the online cases, it's, it's very easy because you have everything uh, online, it's digitized, and there's a lot of, if you have the right tools in place, there's a lot of uh, these types of uh, factors that you can optimize, like whether it's your inventory optimization, the layout of your website, discovery and recommendation experiences, getting analytics at scale, um, and then even protecting your brand. Uh, so if people are posting, things you don't want to represent your brand, you can filter that out um, all with, with AI to enhance these things. Um, but with AI, it also enables you to uh, bridge the gap for, for some of you retailers that have both physical and online uh, presence. You can actually now unify this. We can put cameras in stores and actually understand all these different things from inventory to traffic patterns to analytics um, and even things that could tarnish your brand like violence or fire in your store. So. 
this is really exciting, and I think it's going to be the big uh, kind of evolution of retail um, by leveraging AI to bridge these two domains that traditionally have been separated within organizations. And so how do we do that? Uh, when I talk about Clarify, we really talk about it as a horizontal AI platform. And so what we're talking about is all of the tools that are necessary to build great AI. And that means uh, labeling your data to start. You need great high quality label data in high quantity in order to be able to learn anything from it. So that's where AI usually starts. And we have a labeler product that lets you do that annotation at scale. Then it's all indexed, so you can search over it. And this, I'll show you some examples of searching by image or by keywords. Uh, it's very flexible. And then the full platform is customizable. So you can teach it how to recognize whatever you care about. So it might be your product catalog or additional metadata, brands, logos, anything you can imagine. You can actually, if you have enough data, teach it how to recognize. And then finally, you can run all these predictions at production scale. So we automatically scale everything in the back end. You don't have to think about machines or any of that. Uh, we're keeping it up 24-7 uh, for you. Now, how do all these tools manifest themselves? Uh, it's in two components. One we call Portal, which is easy to use, user interfaces. You don't need to be a developer or an AI expert at all. You can just log in, uh, even create a free account today at clarify.com and check it out. Uh, and then everything that you see in Portal is actually powered by APIs. So you can fully integrate our stack into whatever tools you're using today to get data in, to get data out, get your predictions, hook up to analytics tools, whatever you might want to do uh, is fully powered by APIs. When I talk about the, API, uh, the AI fabric, uh, it's really the notion that we can run wherever you need to. Uh, we have fully hosted solutions in AWS, Azure, and GCP. Uh, we can run on your own private clouds, your own bare metal, even when there's no connection to internet, which some edge devices uh, require. So uh, we make it all work seamlessly so you don't have to think about the deployment issues that are associated with that. And then finally, we can uh, stitch all this together and help kind of advise you and become a true partner in your AI journey uh, with some services. And so uh, let's look at some of these use cases. So in this example, we're looking at how once you've trained uh, a model, you can automatically benefit from that uh, categorization by getting AI to make predictions. So maybe you have uh, you know vendors in your marketplace that are uploading products every day, and you need to be able to categorize them so that people can search and find that. Um, that helps uh, the upload process, makes it easier for them, and hopefully that attracts more sellers and more selling. And it also makes the experience much better for buyers because the uh, catalog is now organized and they can find things that they're looking for. And we support these types of categorization uh, things uh, or use cases in uh, a few different ways. Some of our models are already pre-trained, ready to go, highly accurate, trained on millions of images that we've curated uh, in detail. So for example, we have an apparel detection model. You can check it out at clarify.com slash models, uh, as well as all the other models we have available. Uh, and these are uh, ready to go. So you upload an image and you get predictions like this. It's actually finding bounding boxes where a hat is, as an example, where sunglasses are, necklace and top uh, are a few of the things that recognize in this picture. And so uh, this can be done in just a fraction of a second. As I go to another picture, it automatically ran that through our API and we get these types of predictions. So this is where um, you have a lot of data and you, you might not want to do the task of labeling it in order to recognize things. And you just want to get some high level categorizations. We have a bunch of models to do that. Now, if you want to uh, dive deep and organize it by your specific product catalog, um, that's where uh, you can log into Portal, which is what you're seeing here. And this is an application loaded up with one of our customers' uh, data, like Tradesy, uh, as a longtime customer of ours. And they have a suite of different models to categorize things in different ways. So here's accessories and their subtypes. Uh, so that's a model trained to recognize these 10 different things you see on the bottom. Let me just zoom in a bit. Um, so you can see belts. Um, and if I click on any of these, it's actually going to do a search over this whole data set of uh, imagery to find things that look like belts. And very importantly, this is going to be searching for uh, things that are predicted belts, not automatically labeled belts. And um, 
and it'll rank it by how confident the model is that belt is present. Um, let me see what's going on with the latency. Okay, so here I tried bracelets, um, and you can see bracelets are returned, uh, and I didn't have to label these uh, to be bracelets. It automatically recognized these as bracelets. If I tried belts again, uh, it came back fast, and you see uh, belts are, are recognized. Um, so that's one example model. If I move over to a different model, this one is now trained to recognize brands. So if I search for something like, uh, does it think this product is uh, a Burberry uh, product? Or I can try maybe Coach. Um, so there's, in this case, over 50 different uh, brands. So again, uh, this is all custom trained. We uploaded some images, we labeled it. You can see the number of labels that went into these categories. Burberry was trained with 1,861 images. Now it can recognize on any new image coming in what looks like Burberry or Coach, et cetera. So that's the idea of uh, training AI and automatically uh, using it to organize your content. Now search, uh, this is the idea that you can take an image and find visually similar content. So if you have an experience like this where you have interior shots, maybe you want to offer up uh, shopping for the refrigerator, microwave, the chairs, et cetera. Um, this is where we can index each portion of the overall image and uh, find any product in that portion and look it up in a product catalog. So if you've indexed your catalog with us, you can enable this type of experience on your website where people could upload their uh, whatever shot, uh, could be from a cell phone, could be from a magazine, whatever it might be, um, and find products from your catalog in those shots. Now, when I was talking about the metadata problem earlier, uh, this is what I was referring to. This is an actual search I screenshotted. I was actually looking for a garden hose Y adapter to hook up two garden hoses uh, to my tap. And these are the results that came back for this retailer. Uh, clearly, none of them are correct. Uh, completely different type of Y connector uh, would not solve my problem at all. And I had to figure out a different way to type in my query to be able to find results here. And so this is uh, kind of the current state of search and metadata on products. And I think a huge improvement can be done on both the query understanding uh, using natural language processing and on improving the metadata for each product that is actually indexed in the search uh, tools that you're using, search infrastructure. And so this is where we can help out on both those, understanding the query and improving the metadata. Now, when you have these visual search opportunities, you can use them as recommendation systems as well, it's because you might uh, not find the exact same product that the user is uh, putting in as the query, but that's actually a good thing because that will allow them to discover um, new things that are actually visually relevant. And that allows them to explore things that they wouldn't type in if they knew the keywords. Um, so this is a great way to discover. And it opens up a lot more content as well to the search. So this is, might be a paparazzi shot in an airport of a famous celebrity. You want to find her hat, crop out that part of the image and find visually similar content. You don't need to know the brand or the design or anything like that to be able to find it. Another big problem we help out with, and we have a lot of pre-built models um, for this use case, is moderating out content you do not want. And there's obvious things like drugs, weapons, nudity, uh, violence that you don't want. But there's also things like stock photos. Maybe you're a marketplace and you want to make sure that all of the products that are being uploaded are authentic and the user actually owns them. So you want to block out uh, stock photos. We have models that uh, recognize that kind of stuff. Uh, I covered the apparel detection already. And then when you get into the physical world, this is where opportunities also really bloom. There's lots of different use cases of counting people, um, looking for threats. We can track people, follow them through a, a physical location. Maybe they stole something, you wanna see where they went, or maybe you just wanna understand what your users are doing. Are they congregating in this part of your store? Um, what paths do they follow? Is it easy for them to find the products they're looking for? Um, and this can even go beyond just the people, but into the actual uh, inventory. So we have models that can be trained to recognize the products on your store shelf. This is actually an example we have uh, from our office where we train just a, a toy example. And it's a very difficult problem because there's lots of occlusion that we have to handle. 
uh, applying that to a larger store, tracking people, counting them. Um, and over time, if you hook it up into an analytics dashboard, you could actually take those types of people detections and see you know, when is the, the common traffic patterns, where are the zones within the store that get the most traffic, and start understanding how to optimize your store layouts. Uh, just like you do in the, the digital world, you can now do it in the physical world. We even go back into the warehouses of operations to um, see if there's parts uh, for safety reasons or security reasons, uh, people just shouldn't be in. Uh, we can monitor quality assurance, make sure shipments are actually being shipped to the right people, that the contents of the package are uh, the right uh, order that it needs to go out to that specific person. And then something that must be on everybody's minds, getting back to, to work, opening up. Um, it's a tough time right now in the world. And we've actually been partnering uh, with a lot of uh, retailers to be able to open up their stores. And we have models that can recognize PPE, like face masks you can see on the right here, uh, social distancing model, models. So we can actually say whether these people are too close or uh, an adequate distance apart. Uh, we even have models for hand washing. So if you're maybe a restaurant chain, you want to make sure your employees are uh, keeping up good hygiene, we can recognize that uh, in real time. So to give you uh, a sense of some of the customers, and then I'll just wrap up uh, with some use cases. Uh, we're really broad. It goes from the Department of Defense to social media to uh, travel like Travago. Uh, we can understand lots of different content and help you out. So some people in uh, e-commerce that we worked with are, for example, West Elm, where they built a tool that would learn preferences of you from uh, Pinterest pictures and then recommend uh, items off of West Elm's product catalog. Uh, and that increased basket size and revenue per visit. Uh, Tracy has been organizing their online marketplace, improves the consistency across all these listings and uh, improves the in number of completed postings. Uh, which is huge to get more product inventory up there. Uh, Staples has a cool use case where they, they use our multi-language support. We can predict in 23 different languages. They use 12 of them across uh, Europe to be able to uh, improve SEO. OpenTable uh, moderates their content that's uploaded to their site, and they've improved the productivity of that process by 16x by using Clarify. Um, Style Me Pretty it improves their ad targeting on their site um, so they can understand what content is in the pictures uh, that people are getting inspired by and then serve better ads. Uh, Trivago organizes their hotel listings so we can recognize pool, ocean view, those types of things. When you're searching for your next vacation, they show much more relevant content. And then finally, uh, IKEA has been using us on social media to understand what people are talking about online in regards to their products and their brand and helps get better insights from that. So I'll close up there. Thank you very much for your time. I'd be happy to answer any questions in the breakout session. Thank you.